ticker tape analysis of a trolley accelerating down a slope. This is the worksheet we are using. First the concepts. Change in position or displacement is measured in meters. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement, delta x upon delta t, in meters per second. And acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, delta v upon delta t, meters per second per second. These are all vector quantities. A ticker tape gives a record of the object's displacement as time goes on. In South Africa, alternating current has a frequency of 50 hertz. It changes direction 50 times a second. So the period between dots is 1 50th or 0 0.02 seconds. Because these distances are very small, we prefer to use 10 dot intervals, which gives a time of 0.2 seconds between these two marked points. We count from 0, 1 interval, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Because these are evenly spaced, it represents the motion that at a constant speed, in a straight line, uniform velocity. Here we have a situation where the object was accelerating, the distance between dots increases each successive interval, and again we count out and measure a 10 dot interval. We start the ticker timer and let the trolley accelerate down the slope. Notice how the distance between successive dots increases as the trolley accelerated. Let's start measuring here. We mark that point and call it point A. We then count 10 successive intervals and mark that B. It is 36 millimeters from point A. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and now we get Point number C, which is a distance 91 millimeters from the start. And so we continue until we have five such intervals. So these are the values that we have just measured. Again, we remind you that the time between A and B, which is 10 intervals, is 0 0.2 seconds and so on until point F. So if we start measuring at A, time 0, then the time at B is 0 0.2, 0 0.46 and so on to 1 second. To calculate the velocity in successive time intervals, we need to know the distance between A and B, again 36, between B and C is the total distance of 91 minus 36, which is 55 millimeters, and so on. So we need these intervals between the dots. We convert the millimeter values into meters. Now since average velocity is delta x upon delta t, for the first interval, we get 0 0.036 meters divided by the time interval, giving 0.18 meters per second. Now, when was it moving this fast? At A, it was moving slower than that, and at B, faster. But if we look at halfway during that time interval, halfway between 0 and 0 0.2 gives us an instantaneous velocity at 0 0.1 second. Similarly, the distance between B and C. We subtract the two total distances to give that delta x value of 0 0.055 divided by the time interval. And when was it moving this fast? Halfway between 
those two values at 0.3 seconds and so on for the rest of the tap. Let's fill in the table. So the displacement between C and D, we subtract these values, we get that, we divide it by the time interval and we get 0.365 at an instant of 0.5 seconds. Similarly with the other one, delta X divided by 0.2 gives us 0.46 meters per second at that time. And similarly with the last one, 0.56 meters per second at 0.9 seconds. Now for the acceleration. It's change in velocity divided by this time interval. So if we subtract these two, divided by the time interval, 0.475 meters per second squared at a time halfway between those two, which again is the value in the first column. Similarly here, we subtract these two values divided by the time interval. And similarly for the others, we see the values are all close to the average of 0.475 meters per second squared. Now we want to plot these on graphs. We want to see how the position changes with time. We plot column 2 versus column 1 to get the displacement versus time graph and the velocity versus time graph we plot column 4 versus column 4. So, let's do the first graph. Here are the values. It goes through the origin because that's where we started measuring from. And these points line up not in a straight line. We draw the best curve fit, which is actually part of a parabola. The velocity versus time graph lines up in a straight line. So here we draw the best straight line and we extrapolate to zero. What is the meaning of this point? Well, that's where we started measuring from. It wasn't at the very beginning of the tape, so it had a real velocity at point A. And if we extrapolate it back, we get a value of 0 0.135 meters per second. Whenever we have a straight line, we want to work out the gradient or the slope of the line. By definition, it's the change in the y value over the change in the x value. It's the rise over the run, which is the change in velocity versus time. And that therefore gives us the acceleration and you might remember from the previous slide, that is equal to the average velocity we got in the table. You aren't required to do this on the worksheet, but if we plot those acceleration values, we see that they are fairly constant. So although it was accelerating, it had a uniform acceleration, and this is what we were trying to achieve. Relationships between the graphs. This was shape, the displacement versus time graph, was a parabola. The velocity versus time graph, a straight line. And acceleration versus time was a flat line. The slope of this one at any point, if we want to work out the velocity at that instant, we draw a tangent and the slope of that gives me the velocity value at that time. And the slope of this line, which is constant, is equal to the value of the acceleration. This is what your graphs should look like when you have finished plotting them. And then you take the ticker tape and cut it up and 
glue it and paste it down like this scanned version of the values I got. Notice that these line up in a straight line and it is very similar to this line over here. So those were the values for the tape that I measured. Now I've measured a second tape and these were the change in position values. So we want you now to do the data analysis for these results. Good luck and thanks for joining us. That's it so far.